Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. It's time to talk about why Gaijin loves the USSR in War Thunder. And if I'm quite honest with you, I had to cut down the list because there's so many different things to put on this list because the bias at the end of the day is real when it comes to the history of War Thunder and the USSR's involvement in it. If you don't know, a lot of the core team of War Thunder is actually from Russia, uh, which they used to actually have their head uh, department or, you know, their head place in Moscow. Nowadays, at least online, it's in a different place, uh, but still a lot of the core team is still from there. So there's a few, like, interviews in the early days of War Thunder. There's actually one with a Japanese uh, interview. There's also a Chinese interview where Anton Yudinsev, the CEO of Gajin actually talks about uh, the fact that a lot of them grew up with these vehicles, a lot of them grew up knowing the history of especially the Second World War and also other stuff, and for them it was kind of personal to bring these things to life in a video game. And generally, uh, that is basically what they've done, you know, they've uh, given the best version of many different vehicles uh, for the Soviets, and unfortunately, for other nations, uh, they haven't, which is probably the best way of putting it. And also, there's a few odd other things as well, like there's a few laws uh, when it comes to Russia which are a bit odd. You know, the whole idea that um, there you need to promote kind of the culture of Russia if you're a Russian company uh, in the media that you create. So a lot of people believe that this is being used um, on Gajin or by Gajin to be able to kind of boost their vehicles so people can kind of get into them and have a decent time and there, there's a ton of reasons why people say stuff like this because there is a lot of things in War Thunder which are just odd about the USSR which other nations just don't have starting off with the fact that all of their top tier MBTs seem harder to kill than other MBTs uh, the, the, their autoloaders when you shoot them they just don't blow up half the time and instead what happens is the round just goes through maybe it kills a gunner but now with commander controls that doesn't matter and then well guess what the vehicle just fires straight back at you or with the fuel tanks where the fuel tanks just straight up will eat some of the best darts or best rounds in the game and the soviet vehicles will just survive even if when we have a look at real life footage that isn't exactly the case so there is some weird stuff about a lot of different MBTs. Like for the Soviet ones at the high tier, there's some weird plates in the middle of these MBTs which don't cause any spalling of a round. So if it goes through that plate, it doesn't actually react the round and it just goes in a straight line and doesn't do as much damage as it should, which is just crazy. And then when you put on top of that all the different ERAs that they've added to the vehicles. So not just the trolley armor from the side, not just the strong armor from like the upper glacis and the turrets, now you have to deal with explosive reactive armor, which is on them as well. And you have relict, which is just this insane thing when it comes to war thunder, and contact five, which is usually ARA just kind of stops against like chemical munitions. But this weird conglomeration of ERA for the Soviets, you know, the the relict and the contact five gives protection against not just chemical but also kinetic munitions. So you're shoot it with some rounds and then it just won't go through even though it should and it should batter the vehicle but it just doesn't and then even if it does it loses so much penetration by going through stuff like the relict then you just kind of sat there and the round just looks at the guys in the tank and maybe it makes them into gummy bears or maybe it pens the ammo but doesn't do anything and it's just so infuriating and the, the amount of times that this happens when it comes to Russian vehicles is nuts compared to any other. And that just sucks at the high tiers. There's many other reasons why facing high tier USSR is just so annoying, but those are some of the main ones. You know, they whenever they have an issue in their tech trees is another thing. 
the issues get fixed so quickly. Oh, the Tungus uh, is for some reason underperforming according to statistics. Oh, better just add in the best, uh, the best AA in the game in the form of the Panzer. Oh, certain, you know, light tanks maybe aren't doing the best, like the BMP3. Oh, maybe it's just not having a great time. Better add in the BMP2M, the Object 6A5, uh, the 2S25 and the 2S25M, and also buff the Object 906, just to make sure that people have something to play. Where other nations, like France, have to just deal with gaps for ages. Just, just think about this example. Just think about how crazy it is for the USSR, right? So, when you have a look at USSR... Their mid-tier AA, for the longest time, was pretty bad, right? You had the ZSU-37, and then that went to the Shilka, right? The ZSU-23-4. Um, the, the ZSU, uh, and then they added in the ZSU-57-2, which isn't really an AA. It's more of a tank destroyer, um, but still, it was at least fun to play. Then, on top of that, they added the ZSU-37-2. So that, once again, filled the gap. Then they added the BTRZD. Then they added the M5359. And half of these vehicles went up in BR <laughs> because they were so crazy strong when they added them. And then have a look at America. When was the last time they got a mid-tier AA? They've been stuck between the M42 and the M163 for years, and still nothing has been added to help them out. Instead, what you get is USSR gets four separate AAs over the years to fill that BR bracket. And when asked, why did you add these crazy AAs in the form of the BTRZD and the M53, you know, Gajin says, well you know, there's a BR gap there and we've got to fill it. And it's like, well, great, you know, it's fantastic. Why don't you do that to other nations? Absolutely nuts. And once again, this contributes to all of the narratives about Russian bias. Because why, why is it happening to them but not others when they also need these things? Think about Japan. Oh, Japan doesn't have a great top tier AA. Type 93, completely useless at top tier. Well, wouldn't they like something like a panther, Panzer? Wouldn't that be fantastic? No, give it to USSR. You see the problem here? Then it also, at the same time, isn't just about filling gaps. They also get crazy vehicles each up update, which make people interested in the tech trees. Whether it's stuff like the T80 BVM, whether it's stuff like, of course, the MiG-29, whether it's, you know, even stuff like the MiG-19 back in the day. They are always uh, the nation which gets access to new mechanics or gets access to new vehicles every update, very similar to America in that regard. And that just means that everybody gravitates to them and plays them, because why wouldn't you? They get all the cool shiny stuff, and everybody else just has to deal with the dregs and the dross of whatever comes out. And even this update, they get a flamethrower tank, you know? And they're also going to get a bunch of other stuff as well. Out of the dead blocks that have been announced, two of them are already for the Soviets. And also two pretty good ground vehicles that are coming in. A fun howitzer, which maybe at some point might get unique mechanics. And then, of course, the good old, uh, the good old TO-55 as well to have a bit of fun with. They also have a bunch of vehicles in the game which just have trolley armor as heavies. Now, uh, there's been narratives over the years that heavy tanks have not been able to be heavy tanks because they uh, generally don't have the best armor, and if they get into up tiers, they kind of struggle. For some reason, this narrative doesn't exist for the USSR and only is allowed to exist for everybody else. So stuff like the KV-1s is 5, the KV-1E, the IS-3, the IS-7, the IS-6, the Object 8, uh, 879, or even stuff like the IS-4M. Do you know that back in the day, when ground forces first came out, okay, when ground forces, or 279, sorry, when ground forces first came out, Guess what the top tier vehicle was for the USSR, and guess what the top tier vehicle was for Germany. This is when ground went into OBT. So for Germany, you had the Panther II and the Tiger II 105. Both of those have been removed, by the way. So technically, at that time, the top tier vehicle would be the Tiger II P or the Tiger II H. Do you know what the Soviets got at the same time? They got the IS-4M. 
it was believed that the IS-4M was equal to the Tiger 2105, which is just nuts. So even from the very beginning of War Thunder Ground, USSR was dominant at that, and much more dominant even than it is today, which is just nuts to think about. And yeah, as I said, this heavy tank thing where everybody else is allowed to play uh, and, you know, just basically get annihilated by heat, get annihilated by light and medium tanks, just doesn't seem to exist for uh, the Soviets, so instead they just get to go crazy. They've also had some of the most broken event vehicles in the game just over time. Once again, the Object 279 and the IS-7, you know, these two vehicles, when they were actually released, they were just facing themselves because they were so broken. Basically, you would just have whole matches of IS-7s versus IS-7s, and that was absolutely nuts. You even had stuff like the KV-220, which is one of those vehicles which came out so long ago that it's uh, so powerful still, even in the meta, even after all the changes and everything, that when you see it, it just strikes fear into people. You also have things like the i301. The i301 had to go up in BR maybe three or four times. I'm pretty sure it started life at like 17 or 20. Nowadays it's 30 because it's just an insanely powerful vehicle. Same with the i29, that had to go up in BR. The Leningrad is broken at 4.3 as a premium destroyer, and also it gets the rank 3 status even though it shouldn't. Because if you actually have a look at all of the other 4-3 machines in the game, pretty much none of them are rank 3, they're all rank 2 or they're rank 1. But the Leningrad, along with the Stronyi, is at 4-3 and they're both at rank 3. For, for, so for some reason, once again, USSR gets special treatment when it comes to its event vehicles and also its uh, premiums. It also has the most broken frigates in the game, in the form of the SKR-7 and SKR-1. Insanely powerful frigates, which for some reason do not go up in BR, even though they take over, um, even though they take over naval games regularly, and they just, for some reason, are just allowed to do just crazy stuff all the time, just firing so many rounds, using, of course, the bomb mortars, using the torpedoes. They're such good multi-role machines, and there is no disadvantage to using them. So they just get used constantly, especially during events, making it very hard for new players to actually play, because a lot of new players are playing at 3-7 with their destroyers, and the SKR-7 is at 4-3, so they end up just nuking them as they come in. And then, whenever they do raise the BR of vehicles, they then just give them extra stuff, so therefore they can do better. So, for example, the BMP-2M. Like, the BMP-2M for the longest time was a broken vehicle once again, but it's an event vehicle, and they're, and what happened is, oh, they finally raised its BR, because it used to be 8.7, by the way, it used to be 8.7, but, along with them raising its BR, what did they give it? That's right, they gave it APA, APFSDS, uh, giving it more penetration, and they also gave it a VT ATGM, so you could use it for an anti-air roll, which is just nuts. So, even in the time where they have to, like, up BR a vehicle because it's doing too well, they still give it a crazy amount of stuff to make it do even better at its new BR. And as anybody will tell you, the BMP-2M is just nuts right now. This also happened with a lot of Soviet MBTs, where it was like, oh, well, they're just doing, t they, 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 their win rates are a little bit too high, so, so we're going to have to put them up in BR. But don't worry, guys, we'll just give them three BM-60. We'll just give them even better mega rounds, so it'll balance them out. And it's like, well, okay, so if they're doing really well already, you up their BR, to try and balance them, right? But if you up their BR and then just give them better stuff to use, then they're not going to be balanced, are they? It oh, It's just mind-blowing that stuff like this happens. And then, and then you get contradictions. Contradictions in this tech tree. So they removed, in Germany, they removed the Tiger II 105 and also the Panther II. They also got rid of the Coelian, you know, the Panther AA. All three of these vehicles are cherished by many players. Everybody really enjoys playing them. They're super fun to play, but they were removed from the game. 
right? Because they weren't historical. You know, the mouse got removed because they couldn't balance it. Funnily enough, that never happens to Soviet vehicles. Because even though they're, you know, there's a ton of them which are completely unbalanced. But for some reason, the idea of removing fake vehicles does not apply to the USSR. And there is one concrete example and many other minor examples when it comes to a lot of their general things which proves this. As the Tiger 2 105, the Panther 2 and the Coelian were being removed, there was a vehicle being worked on which is fake. And that's the Kronstadt. The Kronstadt is the high tier you know, a vehicle for the Blue Water Fleet for the USSR. Uh, the good old 7-0 battlecruiser. That thing was never finished. It was hardly even built as a vehicle. Basically meaning that in its iteration in the game, it's fake. And guess what? It gets added to the game, it's another fake vehicle, and it does way better than it should ever have the right to do because it's in the USA tech tree and because it's fake and they can just add in whatever they want, whether it comes to armor, whether it comes to guns, all of these different stuff. So the idea of, quote, making them competitive and balanced in the Blue Water Fleet, unquote, and then you have the German vehicles being removed because of other reasons and then being replaced by vehicles that just do not match them at all. It's just nuts to think about. They also had the most broken helicopters in the game. K-50, K-52, Mi-28 and M. Like, all of these vehicles are just nuts at the high tier of the game. And uh, they aren't as powerful as they used to be, but they're still insane. Like, the Ka-50 came into the game and it had no competition. You could just sit there on the edge of the map and just spam your Vicar missiles and just annihilate everything. There is nothing that could stop it. They have proximity uh, route, they have proximity, you know, setup, so therefore you could go after planes with them. And then also at the same time, you add so much munitions, you could outdo every AA in the game. So the, the AAs could spam all of their missiles at you. You could just spam yours at them, explode their munitions because you had proximity on them, and then you could just kill the AA. It was a horrific experience, and still is, by the way, at the highest tier of the game. They have some of the most broken damage models too. They just get away with pretty much everything that you can think of. And then people just make excuses like, oh, well, in real life, you know, they, they can tank a ton of damage and that's what they're designed for. Well, you know, we've had a year of a certain conflict where you can now see that's not the case, can't you? Isn't that fantastic? But yeah, they even had a whole update which was based around the Ka-50 just to kind of give it its strength and just ri ridiculous abilities. They also gave them a bunch of automatic systems so playing them is just brain dead. It's so easy to play them. It is absolutely nuts. Then you had the SU-25. The SU-25 came in and legitimately broke Air Realistic. Like, I, I know I've used broken a lot in this, but the SU-25 actually completely annihilated a whole BR bracket in Air Realistic because they gave it access to crazy missiles, countermeasures, good maneuverability, and it was facing most vehicles which didn't have countermeasures and could not go against it. What you could do is you could turn up to the battle, hit your periodic countermeasure button, so you just fired countermeasures whenever, and then just fired two missiles at things, destroyed them, and then used your gun afterwards, and then just were maneuverable, moving round and round and round. I was able to go a 5 to 1 in what is supposed to be a strike aircraft when it comes to the game. And then what do they do? They balance it by moving it up and then also moving down a lot of those vehicles that it annihilated. And now all of those vehicles are just creaming everything under them, including stuff like the MiG-19 PT, by the way, uh, just annihilating things as it goes. So the SU-25 actually just destroyed that BR bracket and it will never be the same again because of it and also stuff like the A-10. Because these vehicles, which don't have a lot of speed, but have crazy ordnance, take over games. And the SU-25 is the epitome of that. Many bombers also have been given their overloaded weight in bombs. 
where other tech trees don't even have access to full bomb loadouts because it's deemed as unbalanced, but for some reason stuff like the Year 2s can just wander around with a load where they can hardly even fly or take off because, ooh, that's balanced, is it? Well, why is that balanced and then the other thing isn't? It just makes no sense to me. But it's just been like that way for years, you know? It's, once again, literally from the start of the game, that's how this stuff is. That's how long these issues have existed. And then you just have so many strong underbiard premiums in the history of War Thunder. The terms, the terms T, which, by the way, in the last set of BR changes, didn't go up in BR. So it's still crazy low on the actual, you know, BR setup. The the vehicle itself is 10-0. Same with the 2S38, right? They just didn't go up while everything else went up. So now you have to face those things again with massively inferior vehicles. Just nuts, the fact that that happened. The MiG-17 AS back in the day just dominated air at 9-0. It was just able to just annihilate everything. The SU-11 at 7-0 as well, where, where, which it was there for the longest time time and then it went up in BR and then it went down in BR again because they wanted it to do even better and now it's gone up in BR again and I'm sure it'll go down in BR again at some point and then of course the IS-6. The IS-6 has had so much preferential treatment over the years, same with stuff like the KV-1E and even with the IS-6 like it literally had an extra piece of armor which was in its turret for the longest time before somebody found it and it was classed as a bug because th this vehicle came out and you would shoot the turret and according to you know the armor analysis and everything you should have been able to pen it so people were like what the hell's going on and then like six months to a year passed and then somebody actually was able to look into the internal model of the IS-6 and it turns out just somebody had put an extra piece of armor in the turret so if you penned the outer layer it would hit this layer and then nothing would happen. That was a bug, you know, quotations bug, for the longest time, and it was just another example of a ridiculous premium vehicle that should not have been, you know, put into the game as it was. It, a convenient overpowered vehicle in another sense. Just completely ridiculous when it comes to the game. Also, they have every type of vehicle you'd want, so there's no reason for anybody to play anything else in the game. You want strike aircraft? Cool. IL-2s, IL-10s. You want bombers? PE-8s, one of the fun ones. Year 2s. You want fighters? All of the Yaks, all of the LAs, all of the MiGs. They have a ton of different stuff. Light vehicles, BMPs, BMDs, you know, even stuff like PT-76s. Heavy tanks, we've talked about many of them. Medium tanks, we haven't even discussed. And they have some of the best medium tanks and MBTs in the game. They just have a bit of everything. You're able to play everything with the nation. So why bother? play anything else and then you know everybody does really well with them because they have everything and then they just dominate it's crazy and then also they're one of the easiest beginning nations to the game you have the bt5s and bt7s which are super quick to run around with and have you know a bit of fun which is quite nice and then also you have the i15s which are the strongest biplanes in the game by far so if you're even a new player Getting into the game, the USSR's has a cakewalk. You know, you actually have armor that works, especially when you get to the T-34 and the, the T-50 and the KV-1. You have some fun AAs, you have some fun mobility vehicles, and you have some decent cannons which have good reloads. You know, the only, the only nation I'd say which is probably easier at the low tier is probably Germany. And it's a toss-up most of the time, especially since, you know, the planes are very strong for the USSR and so is the naval component as well. It's just nuts when you think about it. And as I said, this was a shortened list. There are many other things. We might do a part two. There, there might even be a part two of why Gaijin loves Russia, because it's just nuts. Like, it, it's crazy. I can't believe how many things over the years I was able just to remember. And that's, and that's just over a very short period of time. It's just crazy how OP Russia is at the end of the day. As always, I hope you have a wonderful day. And I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Brendan Quinn, Vilnaeus, Character Fuel, Juan the Panda, Carrion Crow, Gus Irenicus, Pyman, Merciless Reaper, Orange Tail, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Moxie, B. Young, Barine, Peter Grayling, Alan Hacker, Sam Alslan, Uncle Bean, 
and Derek R. and also LaFouche for supporting the channel.